Congress is considering an important pro-life bill, and today we'll share a personal story that will explain why it makes scientific sense. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard. You, you may have heard about a bill that's being considered in Congress. It's called the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. It, it basically says, it's an awkward name, but it basically says that since babies can feel pain somewhere around 20 weeks, that they should be protected under the law. I want to introduce you to somebody today who has an unusual perspective on that, and there's a reason that she does. I'd like you to meet Carolyn Asher, who lives in the Kansas City area. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. And we want to go back about 18 years in time. Tell us what you were experiencing at that time in your life. Well, I was 23 weeks gestation and I found myself um, delivering a 23 week year old baby that they said probably wouldn't live through birth or if it did, that it probably wouldn't live after that. And that is hard news to take, but it's, the, it's what you were dealt. I mean, it's what you had to live through. And tell us, right. tell us about that experience. I've been in a, in a neonatal intensive care unit, and it is astonishing to me how tiny those babies are. Yes. Yes, she weighed one pound, six ounces when she was born, and then lost down to one pound and one ounce after that. She was 11 inches long. Her heart rate was only 40 and uh, 40 beats. And so uh, for about 15 minutes, uh, they tried to get her heart rate up, and it finally came up to 120. And they'd actually kind of given up on her, and they'd put her isolate away in the storeroom, and they turned off the bed warmer in the ICU, and they had to retrieve everything and call everyone, get everything set back up. And um, then she uh, actually, she just was a textbook baby for about two weeks. And... Um, uh, about two weeks later, she caught a yeast infection in her blood, which brought in a whole nother ramifications of what she had to go through. Now, what's it like as a mom to go through that experience? Well, it was, it was really hard. Um, you wouldn't think that you would have so much love for a little child that you'd never seen before. But once that baby was born, it was a whole new love that God has given us um, as moms, as parents, when, that, when you actually see that baby. So it was pretty hard to see her go through a lot of the things that she had went through. Yeah. Now, Hannah, at that point in her life, was in the window of time where if she had still been in the womb, she would be covered by, by a law like the pain-capable uh, Unborn Child Protection Act. Uh, tell me what you saw. Here's a baby who's just barely past 20 weeks. Could she feel pain? Oh, yes, she could. Um, every time they would stick her to get her blood for the day to counter platelets or whatever, um, you could see that she was physically in pain. And in fact, the yeast infection that I was talking about before they had to do a spinal tap on her. And when they did, when they kind of rounded her back and stuck the needle up her spine, you could physically see what was going on with her. Yeah, that gives you a, a unique perspective on this law that they're, this legislation they're considering in Congress. Is that something you support then? I mean, does that give you a, a sense of it? Absolutely. Yeah. When you talk about this to other moms around, uh, around and about, what do you tell them? How do you, how do you convince them that this is something that is truly a pro-life measure? Well, I just tell them Hannah's story. And a lot of times I'll just see women in tears just because of what she had to go through and what we went through as parents, not knowing if she would live from day to day. Yeah. Tell us how Hannah's doing now. Hannah is doing perfect. Um, they, you know, all through the process, she said, oh, she could be deaf, she could be blind, she could be just so many different things. And we would pray for each, each thing as we, it would come up. Um, after six days, uh, her lungs uh, were supposed to secrete this certain fluid. They had been putting some uh, fluid in her lungs to help her stay alive. So we had a network of people praying and we would pray for things like this. And instantly the Lord would just help her come through this and just heal her body and make uh, work whatever needed to work. Well, it's, it's a great story. I really appreciate the fact you've taken time today to, to share that with us. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. All right. 
And, and thank you for watching. We do want you to consider the, the House has passed uh, H.R. 1797. They passed it back in June of 2013. It, it sits in the Senate committee right now where it's getting no attention whatsoever. A companion bill that's like the House version, similar language, was introduced in the Senate. And guess what? It's also not getting much movement in that chamber. If you'd like to do something about this, there are two places you can apply your energies. One would be to contact your senator senators and let them know that you support this kind of legislation. And the other is uh, we, we know that nine states have already passed similar legislation at the state level. Uh, if you hear about a bill like this in your state legislature, you can also give support to it there. And it's usually called something along the lines of the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. So uh, remember to pray for your elected officials as they consider bills like this. Pray for the babies around the country who are experiencing the things that, that Carolyn just shared with us. And remember, stand tall and be heard.